Well, welcome back. And with us now to look at the life of the church in Quebec is John Sebastian Moran. John Sebastian is an evangelical theologian and author, as well as a Baptist pastor, and he's joining us from Montreal. Welcome to Context. Hi, nice to meet you. Oh, great. John Sebastian, it was another Quebec election, 1960, that began this long march to Quebec secularism. And that began the formal separation of state from clergy. Many sad yes. episodes forced tithing, the revenge of the cradle. Secularism was a price to be paid by a church who misused its power. I, I think we all can conclude that. But you see a very different spirituality in Quebecers in this election. How do you describe it? Uh, it's interesting because uh, uh, we're trying to see the religious issue as one of the most important thing in this election, and uh, the uh, govern Marois government surely is trying to ride on the the fact that uh, the Quebec people wants to be kind of a agnostic, a theist state kind of thing. But uh, what I find when uh, I'm talking with people on the street or people in my neighborhood, uh, they're not a theist uh, mainly. They they actually believe in some form of new age, or I believe there's a god or something. Uh, and I do not believe if you, if you do ask the people if they want every sign removed from uh, either was the, the, the government officials or the schools, they'll say no. Uh, they want to have the diversity of, uh, of faith and cultures and in one nation and not only be kind of a little xenophobic about it. Okay, so in that curiosity, Radio Canada reported a Catholic church was shut down once a week in Quebec in 2013, and yet Protestants are stubbornly talking about planting 25,000 new churches in Quebec. Uh, John Sebastian, how did you come to make church part of your life as a Quebecer? Um, when I was young, my, my stepfather was actually a, a kind of a Baptist, uh, not practicing. Uh, he went to church if once in a few uh, weeks, and then he brought me. And then after, I just developed my own faith and wanted to uh, stay in it. And uh, it became a part of my life and the way I wanted to have an impact on everything I'm doing. And I've worked with youth for, uh, I was camp director for many, many years, and I see a real big difference when those young people meet Jesus and, the, and their faith, and just in terms of values and stability and family-oriented values, I can see a huge difference. You still think Quebecers need Jesus. Why? Uh, the philosopher Pascal uh, said actually that man has a, a hole in his heart and that the only thing that can actually fit the needs is Jesus. Uh, in some way, I believe uh, in our society, we try to find a meaning in life. The Christian faith actually gives a meaning and, and kind of a, uh, put everything in perspective that it is about helping and loving others. And that if we do that, we can change the whole world one heart at a time. All right, John Sebastian Moran, thank you very much. It was my pleasure. All right, and we've left links to your books and uh, the work that you're doing on our website along with our other guests. Thank you. When we return, a bishop from Montreal, the youngest bishop in Canada, on his thoughts for connecting people to God. Call us, email us, tweet, or Facebook us. How else are you going to join the conversation? We want to hear from you. Well, welcome back to Context, and we're with Thomas Dowd. He is the Auxiliary Bishop of Montreal, and he joins us from Montreal. Bishop Dowd, welcome to Context. We're delighted you could join us. Thank you very much for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Well, we've talked about the Quebec election all program, and you believe that aside from all the election issues, there's actually a crisis of hope in Quebec. Explain what you mean. Well, very often we think that the church is experiencing, and not just the Catholic church, but religion in general seems to be experiencing a crisis of faith. But from my point of view, we have to take it a step further. I think that very often what we think is a crisis of faith, in other words, what it is that we're supposed to believe is really a crisis of hope. Very often people are not asking themselves what to believe. The question isn't what, it's so what. 
so what if I believe or not? So what if I, I go to church? So what if I pray? So what if I adopt these various uh, spiritual approaches and philosophies? That question, so what, is not really tied to faith, it's tied to the virtue of hope. Hope is the question of meaning. It's, it's faith that comes to be practical in our lived history, in the way we understand our world and our own place in it. And that's where I think the various religions, including the Roman Catholic Church, are experiencing this, uh, this crisis. We need to articulate our hope. Okay, let's talk about the cross of Jesus, which is such a symbol in your province. So what? What does it mean to the way a person would live? That's a very good question. Uh, with the cross of Christ as a Catholic, as a Christian, we believe that the mission of Christ, and especially the work that he accomplished on the cross, that's really the center of history. It's the center of a, a story, a narrative, that God has been telling uh, to humanity, but also with humanity. We're not just recipients of the story, we're participants in the story. And the Son of God coming into the world, undertaking his mission, but a mission that goes all the way to the cross, that becomes the, the centerpiece, you might say, of that story. It accomplishes a, a change in human history, a change in human perspective, a, a change in our understanding of who we are vis-a-vis -vis ourselves and our neighbors. That is very, very powerful, and it has practical effects in the way a society chooses to live and organize itself. So explain how an individual engages that. How, what would be the practical effect? Where do well, you let, begin with God? Let me give you a very simple example how I believe the cross can have such an important impact, that one element of Jesus' life and ministry. If we believe that the reason we suffer is because we were bad, the problem is it also means if somebody else is suffering, it's because they were bad, and it becomes very easy to say to ourselves, oh, I don't need to help that person because they're just being punished for their sins. Christ on the cross breaks that. He cracks that open. It calls us to a deeper compassion. If the most innocent human being ever could wind up tortured and dying on the cross, then that means that he's not being punished for any sin that he did. So it, it, it speaks a lie into that perspective, and it calls us to a sense of justice and a sense of compassion and mutual solidarity. It's a new perspective, a new beginning for human society. Well, we've looked at uh, a lot of background today on Quebec's heritage and its identity. Are people interested, ready, to have a relationship with the truth of Jesus? I think a lot of people are searching. I don't know that they've all applied the name Jesus to the answer uh, that they're looking for, but I think there are certain values, uh, deep aspirations, deep desires that truly dwell in the, the deepest part of the human heart, and as they are searching, the, the Lord Jesus is calling to them in those deepest places. And that's where the so what comes out. Every time we are asking ourselves, how am I going to live my life? Why am I going to live my life in this or that way? The so what question becomes the question of hope. What, what am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do today that has meaning, that has purpose? That is the issue of hope. And when we don't have an answer, it becomes the crisis of hope. Bishop Dowd, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. For all of us, I'm Lorna Duick. Thanks for watching. Join us next week as we explore life beyond the headlines. <laughs> <laughs>